Welcome back to Master Room Gaming Studios. I'm Craig. I'm Connor. And today we're gonna to be doing a Tyranid High Fleet overview. This is gonna be a little bit of a deep dive into each of the seven Tyranid High Fleets. It'll be great for you new Tyranid players as well as some of your new ones. If you're gonna find this helpful, please like and subscribe. And hit the bell icon. And let's get into this video. All right, so this is gonna be the outline of the Tyranid High Fleets. How this is gonna work, we're gonna run through each Tyranid High Fleet. There are seven of them right now. And we're gonna go through the bonuses you get for being in that detachment. We're gonna go over their specific Warlord trait, the Psychic Powers from Blood of Ball, their Stratagem, each, or each High Fleet does have their own specific Stratagem, and we'll go through their specific Relics. After that, we will also cover the High Fleet's play style. This is not designed to be a competitive guide, though it will give you an idea of some of the key units you're definitely gonna to wanna to bring as this. Some of the play styles are either more combat, more shooty, and at the end of the video, stay tuned, we will rank them from where we think they land on the power scale from some of the most competitive ones to some of the weakest factions we have, or high fleets we have. With that being said, let's start off with our first high fleet, Leviathan. All right, guys, first up, we have High Fleet Leviathan. They are known for their balance and resilience. Their High Fleet adaptation gives everything with that High Fleet a six plus feel no pain if it's within six inches of a Synapse character, or if it is a yeah, Synapse or if character. It is, yeah. The Warlord trait you can take with this High Fleet is reroll once to hit, to wound, to damage, to advancing and charging, or a save each turn. So kind of like salamanders? It's, yeah, real right. one hit wound, yes. Yeah. So you can only choose one of them. One of those things. It, it is like salamanders with their artifice, artificer, whatever. Something like is. that, yeah. But it's only one of them. One of those things per turn. Yes. Okay. The psychic power they come with is called Hive Nexus, and it makes it so that all synapse creatures have an 18 inch range on their synapse. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, the stratagem you get with it is War of All Fronts. And actually, I think we're gonna have Craig explain this one. Yeah. So with War on All Fronts, you have to pick an enemy unit that is within two inches of two enemy units. These two, enemy, two friendly units have to have the keyword of fly and the keyword without fly. So think of it as a group of intercessors being charged or attacked by a Carnifex and a unit of gargoyles. If you have both of those things, both units get to reroll one's two hit and two wound. It's a very specific stratagem, but one that can be pretty powerful. Very niche. It, it really yeah. exemplifies the fluff of them being a very balanced high fleet. Yes. They have both the sky and the ground, yep, but definitely. it comes into play. And lastly, for the overview of these guys, we've got the relic that they can come with. It's called the Slayer Sabers. It gives whoever's using it, a monstrous creature, I yep. assume, plus one attack. It has the base strength of the user, AP minus two, and does D3 damage. Explain the last bit. Yeah, the last little bit, it's a little weird, but you roll, if you don't kill an enemy unit and they are infantry or biker, then you roll a D3, and if the wounds, the wounds that they have left is less than the D3 that you roll, then they die. Even, it, even more specific. It's than very specific, strategy. but it might come into play, especially now with Outriders having Mm. four wounds and True. bikes having four wounds you can do your your damage three and okay they've got one wound left you roll a d3 a on a extra. three plus it kills them sure a little extra punch which helps out okay all right so how the leviathan play style style is like we said earlier they are the most versatile and balanced of all the high fleets they really lean on having synapse with their high fleet adaptation mm -hmm. hive nexus to further boost their synapse range and you know, getting six up feeling of pain for being a synapse creature or within six inches of a synapse creature. Right. Uh, it requires, you know, you want a little bit of everything for being balanced. You want to have your shooting, your hive guard, your exocrines, your tyrant effects. You got to have your melee. Uh, warriors are great because they can get that six up feeling of pain. And huge difference on them. Yeah, yeah. six up feeling of pain really helps. You need some fly and some non fly units to make um, benefit of their stratagem war on all fronts. Some key units uh, we can touch on. The Flying Hive Tyrant's gonna probably be one of your best ones. 
because it'll be a key fly unit yep. for war on all fronts. You can give them the Slayer Sabers because they are one of the only things that can take the monster's bone swords. Mm. I don't, I don't know if you would, but again, it helps with uh, with them. Uh, other things, warriors, like we said, zone thropes is a, a sneaky one here because zone thropes and malanthropes have the fly keyword, which I didn't know by the way before they this. Also, I don't have them on here, but venomthropes, I believe, also have the fly keyword. They fly as well. It's they float, but floating is also flying. Floating for the tyranids, at least, <laughs> means that you're flying yeah basically so yeah. It, it's sneaky you can use those units those more support units to help give your hive tyrants or your warriors extra rerolls on their to hits and wounds and i think it's something good to note too is that even if your opponent knows about war on all fronts i don't think most people even think about like a zone throw getting into combat and that having a benefit yeah it's you know not I mean? it's not a combo where your opponent's like i have to stop have to be this. aware of this yeah. it's just it's one command point it just helps yeah, it sneaky, helps anything out way, yeah. and then you know gaunts gargoyles big monsters anything really pretty well, much can include whatever you want in this kind of as population. long as you've got you got heavy synapse and a good balance across the board yeah so our next high fleet is probably a fan favorite and that is the kraken they are known for their lightning fast flanking attacks so their high fleet adaptation, they actually have two things, unlike most of, of them. 3d6 and pick your highest for advance. So really guaranteed you get in those five or sixes on your advance. And they can fall back and charge, which is really big, especially in ninth edition where you want to always be on the objectives. Yeah. You can hit somebody, and if you get tied up, you can fall back the next turn. It's interesting that they gave Kraken two very good two, abilities yeah. with the adaptation and some... The other ones only get like one decent to so decent so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kraken they did benefit from having two. Hmm, okay. uh, the Warlord trait is actually a pretty good one in in ninth edition. Is you get to pick one unit within six inches and they get to fight first. Mm. So, I mean, it helps out if your opponents have some fighting last, or you can play that game of who fights first and not with it. Uh, Synaptic lure, like most of the Blood of Ball psychic powers they're really good yeah. where this just there is no range to it uh, you get to reroll yeah. all charges against a chosen enemy unit i didn't really yeah, yeah it's i have a lot to learn too about you <laughs> i guess but yeah so the, the blood of ball ones are awesome like that so again helps with that mobility mm -hmm. your stratagem opportunistic advance double the advance roll and it is there's an faq i had someone pointed out to me that that double the advance roll also counts if you use Swarm Lord's Hive Commander ability. So you get to double two advance rolls. Whoa. I didn't think it worked that way, but Jeez. there's an FAQ out there that says technically rules is written. It, it does work that way. Okay. And the last one, which is probably one of the best relics, um, it is called Chameleonic Mutation. Minus one to hit for ranged weapons targeting that bear. Huge. Very good on like a Hive Tyrant. Huge on a Hive Tyrant. Or a trigon prime because Ooh. they can take them oh that yeah. helps out on them cool <clears throat> okay and for the kraken play style it definitely obviously leans on combat and mobility given the upgrades that it gives your army mm -hmm. uh, generally it will be using mobility to win the objective game which is already the tyranids strong suit i would say but yeah they are it's increased <clears throat> even further with these guys uh uses mobility to get into key combats as well using 3d6 advance Plus Onslaught can be devastating. Yeah, to... allowing the Onslaught, because Onslaught lets yeah. you advance and charge. Yeah. So giving any unit that chance to get a very good advance and a charge after that is yeah. perfect. You're almost guaranteed for a good roll a with good that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can tag frontline units, fall back, and charge deeper. So it's pretty much the most mobile you can make. The, the, the fall back deeper because yeah. so everything's fall back okay you go backwards from yeah. the enemy you can fall back sideways towards, towards forward enemy. towards the, the opponent yeah. it's just you have to leave the combat so right. because you can fall back and charge you can target those screening units yeah fall back away from them and then you can charge another unit farther in the, into the lines right like a key character like that is supporting character or something yeah. It just gives you a lot of extra movement options, basically. Yeah. And like we touched on key units, obviously the Swarm Lord, given the use of his 
Hive Commander. Hive Commander, plus you can have Onslaught, mm -hmm. plus the 3d6 Advance. Uh, other things that benefit a lot from the movement as Gene Stealers, who can already move very well. Yep. Carnifexes, who so need the help. The, car the thing with the Carnifex is that they have an ability which is they can deal a mortal wound um, mm -hmm. when they charge. Yep. And they get plus one hit when they charge. So the key for Carnifex is even if you're going to be fighting the same thing, always fall back and charge because you uh -huh. can do a mortal wound and you get plus one to hit. Ooh. So this wow. is. This really is the best way in my opinion to make carnifexes work at yeah. least close combat ones is to play them as kraken yeah. because of that okay and it's a similar to why gene stealers are good in this you have hormigons just for combat speed fast speed yep. fast little guys <clears throat> yep warriors you could say warriors for pretty much every hive fleet almost warriors right. are so good that yeah. there's a way to make warriors work for every hive fleet so yeah. we're gonna put them in here warriors for this too termagants other close combat units Always good. And then it is nice to have Hive Guard or other shooting elements, but they won't They won't benefit. They won't really benefit. But if you're playing part. if you're playing a pure Kraken high fleet, yeah. you you gotta have some shooting. You can't yeah. just I mean, competitively, yeah, you gotta have something to put out some something long range. Plus tanks or something. Plus tanks, pick out some devastators or yeah, something like that. Definitely. But that's Kraken. That's the play style. Now we'll go into Behemoth. Behemoth. One of your favorite, at least on the look-wise. I do love the paint scheme, color scheme of Behemoth. So Behemoth is similar to um, to Kraken, but they take away from that mobility, and they give a little bit more of that mobility into firepower. Yeah. So they're still about combat and speed. As their high fleet adaptation, they let you reroll your fa failed charge rolls, which sure. is great. It can save you a lot of command points in the long run. And how does that... Get you, oh, I guess firepower as in hitting Hit, power. Punching power, oh, okay, yeah, not gotcha. shooting, sorry. I was thinking shooting. Punching yeah. power. Okay. Uh, so their warrior trait, wounds of six plus do an additional damage. Mm. This one's great because we are still old codex. Right. So fives and if we go to the psychic power, ah, unstoppable hunger is right. plus one to wound. So now it's on fives and sixes, that additional damage goes up. Enjoy it while it's there. It. If you didn't watch my combo video, Go to my combo video, go to the last one, the Hive Tyrant. It will show you how to use Behemoth to do a Damage 8 Hive Tyrant. Lots of fun. Damage 8? Damage 8 Hive Tyrant. I don't think I've watched enough. you got to watch that yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so then there, yeah, so Unstoppable Hunger. It is a 9-inch range, so unlike the rest of the Blood of Ball ones, there is a range limit to it. Right. But it's still a good one. I mean, hard to complain about a Psychic Power having a range. Yeah, like, I know. Like most of them do, but yeah. Uh, the stratagem, brute force, it, it's okay. Um, charging units can inflict a, a mortal wound on 6+. plus, 2+, plus for monsters. I mean, could be nice if you're using Carnifexes. You can stack, you can like stack it. Two. Use it on old One-Eye because he does D3 mortal wounds. There so you, you can go. do D3 plus 1. If there's, better. I, I mean, or you can use it on Hormagons where, mm. you know, you roll for everything that gets in the combat. Sixes do mortal wounds. Oh. So... Huh. It would be good if you're going up against, say, Terminators or uh, Custodians. It has uses. It has its uses, yeah. yeah. And then their Relic is... What is the actual name of the Relic here? We are... We're going to find it quickly here. We're going to find it. We got the Codex. There it is. The Scythes, Scythes of Tyran. They're beefed up Scything Towns, essentially. Mm. So plus one attack, which is good. Plus one strength. AP minus three. Flat three damage. Six is to hit, generate an extra attack. That sounds pretty good. That's a pretty good one. And yeah. some of the tiered relics, like this one, you can actually use adaptive physiologies on the relics. Most armies you can't do that, but Tyrans you can. Mm. So you can put wow. murder size on this relic, oh. and it is plus one attack, plus two strength, AP minus four, four damage. It's a very. I'd say that's very unique to Tyranids. It's very whole, unique that to kind Tyranids. Of stacking thing, yeah. yeah. Again. Use it while you have it, because I sense some things are going to change in 9th edition Codex. Definitely. We'll see when it happens. It's just the way everything else is going, but yeah, just a guess. And for the Behemoth playstyle, it leans heavily on combat, but unlike Kraken, it's more about the actual fighting combat itself. as opposed to getting to the combat. Yep. So it has mobility. It is the most, I'd say, the most consistent for getting to combat, mm -hmm. as far as like making charge rolls goes, obviously. Uh, potential to hit hard in combat. Psychic powers give you 
plus one to wound. Oh, uh, yeah, plus one to wound yeah. I, on anything. You put that on Hormigons, you put that on Worries, put it on Carnifexes. Pretty much whatever the situation depends on, I'd say. It's hard to go wrong with plus one to wound. Yeah, definitely. Key units to this one are pretty similar to Kraken. Mm -hmm. They're the two most similar, um, yeah. I, I would say. The com yeah. I mean, the combat ones, there, you'll see there's a yeah. one more combat sure. high fleet. They all, you know, th there's good combat bugs. Right. Um, That's true. It's just how you want to use the combat or right. what par aspects you want to buff. But just to make sure, I think it is worth going through yeah. uh, Flying Hive Tyrant because the psychic powers are different. It is still good to have a Flying Hive Tyrant. The sides of Tyran Relic yes. is really Very good on Very beneficial Hive on him. Yep. Again, Warriors, like we said, Gene Stealers. Although Gene Stealers hit really hard, they do sometimes need a bit of extra mobility. Yeah. yeah, they still need a little help to get up there. Yep. And then you got all the three Gaunts, and for big guys, we've got, looks like Toxicrin, High Respects, and yeah, any of the sl slower big boys. Any of the slower big boys that would help from a free reroll charge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Behemoth. Yeah. The next one we have is yet another combat one. This is the third and final yeah. of the combat ones. Yep. So they're known for their potent toxic, so they take the Tyranid toxic up another up to 11 mm -hmm. i was really it's like a six but <laughs> it true. gets up there yeah so their high flea adaptation is everybody gets to reroll wound rolls of one which is not bad it's not bad but for That's that being your only benefit to only yeah. affect one phase of the game right it's it's, it's tough when comparing it to kraken or behemoth yeah yeah e yeah so then the Warlord trait... That's for later, though. Uh, that's, for, that's for later. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Warlord trait, four plus to deal a mortal wound in the fight phase. Whatever. Nothing great. Not super interesting. Uh, Poise's influence is a good one. Uh, an extra AP to a unit within nine inches. Hmm. So, I'm thinking of something here. Yeah. You could actually give this to my Hormogons. Again, that power combo video I just did, I didn't think about being Gorgon. You could make your Hormagons AP minus five Ooh. if you stack this on top of them. Oh. I think you can. So there, there is uses to at least the psychic Any, power. Yeah, you can make your warriors have some more AP. You can yeah. make anything. Your Termagants can have AP minus one yeah. with it. It's easy. You know, it's good. Something to experiment with for sure. Hyper toxicity. Your, is there a key stratagem? Mm -hmm. uh, toxin sacks go up on five pluses instead of six pluses, which is... Fine, I guess. Toxin sacks aren't great. Not used often right now. They're, I think they're a little too expensive for what they do. But you could, you know, build a list around. You toxin. can. You can. Yeah. If you're gonna use Gorgon, you might as well. You might go as well. That is the the fluffy thing to do is yeah. give everything toxin sacks. Yeah. And then the the relic. Is um, that real? That's really what the relic does. It, yeah, you have to take a wound first, but your tough one plus one oh. toughness. Take a wound, and then you get plus one toughness after. After you take it. It's really weird. I mean, but that's interesting, It though. is. So you can get your Hive Tyrant to toughness yeah. eight doing that. That is a big difference from seven. Yeah. In I don't, this game, at least. I don't think there's anything else that can... Re uh, the only other thing that could benefit that, again, is a Trigon Prime. You could give him up to toughness seven, so no longer he's a weak toughness six. That's a huge difference, too. It is a big difference, yeah. but like, you got you to gotta take a wound. And it's if it's the taking person, one wound in a controlled way is and it, kind of it is it is at the end of the phase, so you have to survive that phase. Uh, so if they're gonna shoot your trigon, hmm. they're not gonna just plink it with the pistol. You take a wound, you go up a toughness. Not, no, they're gonna blast it with four last cans and it's gonna die. But it's an interesting one. I didn't realize that's what it was, but there's probably some ways you could hive tyrant. I think is the best way to do it. Yeah. Or no, nope, it's a relic. Yeah, that's what I would say. I, it's an interesting one, though. I like that. Or, or, last one we'll say here, your Turvagon. Toughness 9 on a Turvagon. That's It insane. could be fun. Not competitive, <laughs> just fun. It could be fun. <laughs> try it out. Yeah, try it out. And as for the play style, besides the things we <clears throat> just touched on that sound yeah. like a lot of fun to me, uh, they are very focused on close combat. Like we said, it's the last of the three close combat ones. It uh, mostly leans on damaging and high volume of attacks. Mm -hmm. It's toxic. The lower strength models are generally going to be the things that benefit benefit yeah. from toxin sacks a lot. Although, I mean, 
It can help against like tanks and stuff. It can, or? yeah, it can help. Yeah, it, yeah, the poison right now for Karenids is not the old way where it didn't work on tanks. Right. But giving that, yeah, giving toxin sacks to hormigons could Gaunt's, make them scary. Gaunt's is the biggest thing I think that can benefit yeah. from this. But uh, hypertoxicity on warriors. What did you? What do you mean by that? Um, the 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 plus the, one the stacking the thing. stacking yeah. yeah. So if you want to pay for toxin sacks on your warriors, which I would only ever do in this gorgon, gorgon. Yeah. is now on wounds of five and six hmm. then your bone swords are doing two damage Sounds so pretty good, actually. It, it, it's good it's yeah. not great but it's good that's good and extra, extra ap yeah always good again extra your bone AP swords your poisonous weapons if you stack those on tyranid warriors with bone swords now your damage two ap minus three you really will be chopping through intercessors and right. things like that but so there is a function for it. There's a use of it. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I mean, we can say Hive Tyrants pretty much benefit from all of these, but key units are Hive Tyrants, like we touched on. Big blobs of warriors this time because you're investing points into them. Yep. You want them to be putting out a lot of damage. Uh, Hormigants, I think you could say Gargoyles too. If you could, yeah. You could make the Gargoyles you work in here. You want to do like super fast. I mean, Hormigants are very fast, but... Super fast. Yeah, the gargoyles could be fun. Yeah, and um, any big monsters. And the last thing is that it has a good balance of shooting and psychic yeah, you, assistance. Because the combat bonus isn't that great, you right. can't go full combat and expect to do great. Right. You got to balance it with some shooting and psychic as well. Yeah. So this is... Ooh, it's not one of my favorite. Not one of my favorite. We'll get to well, it. Well, you guys will see. Yeah. Hydra. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Very interesting. Fluff wise, it's really cool. Yes. Table wise, you'll see it's just not quite there right now. Yeah. So the high fleet adaptation is you reroll hit rolls in the fight phase if you outnumber. So all Hydra is basically all about swarms. Swarming, yes. I have a lot of little guys. A lot of little guys, even potentially big blocks of warriors again, yeah, or raveners. They could count. It as, could work. Yeah. Uh, so. Rerolling hit rolls in the fight phase if you outnumber. Warlord trait, six plus to heal a single wound each turn. I don't I don't know why you do that. I don't either. I don't like <laughs> I don't, it. I don't either. The psychic power is a cool one. Death Shriek, friendly mo friendly models explode on sixes. Um hmm. so you get a bunch of termagons in there against some really choppy enemy units. You use the psychic power. Now they're all exploding on sixes. I mean if you get a little lucky with that, you could yeah, you can Cause spike a your lot dice. Of extra damage, yeah. I mean, think of like the spike your dice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the best thing would be um, right now in the meta the 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 blade guard veterans for space marines and the terminators for death not deathwing dark yeah deathwing dark angels mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. really good invulnerable saves really tanky units and they're gonna chop through thirty gaunts pretty quick. Yeah. So you get your models up there, surround them, explode. You might be able to kill a Terminator or two yeah, definitely. for a psychic power. Definitely. Uh, their stratagem is unfortunately by far the worst one because you have to pay reinforcement points for this. Yeah. So otherwise it'd be good. Um, it's a play on an old 7th edition rule that they used to have. I was going to say, to old players, you probably understand why this is not great. But to new players, it's not really as good as it might sound yeah it's because you have to spend points. if you'd have yeah. to spend points there's some serious potential here to keep bringing back 30 man blobs of gaunts yeah that would be great but you have to account for those in your points so you're essentially just paying playing the game with less points to start yeah i guess that's it's, yeah that's true i don't like it okay. um slime or mega infestation uh, you real failed wound rolls with and you have to upgrade a two death spitters with slimer maggots, which is the the high tyrant gun. Or you can get you can't give it to current effects, but that you know the the DACA gun that the yeah. high tyrant takes. Yeah. So you upgrade it, you real failed wound rolls with it. Huh. Eh. It's weird. It, That's a weird. It's one fine. Too. So the reason they do that is in the fluff you can actually see in the picture here. It talks about how even the slimer maggots are multiplying as they're being shot. It's cool. It's cool. It's fluff, fluff wise, yeah. Hydra is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool fluff. But it. Eh. Yeah. In the game, it doesn't, it really, doesn't really hold equal up. Equal out too. Yeah. All right. So for Hydra, just from the top, I should. I feel like we should reiterate. Yeah. If you do not outnumber your opponent in close combat, this does nothing. 
you do not get to benefit from anything yeah. from this hive fleet. So that being said, <laughs> uh, you definitely need to lean into swarms and big units. That's the whole thing. Yeah. So you just basically want to have a lot of little guys on the board. So because of that, you actually, for once, don't really want... I mean, you can have a hive tyrant, of course. You want HQs and stuff, but... You want to le lean your points it's, into the little guys. It's all gone. So yeah, you want to play the, the yeah. carpet of Tyrions where you just throw yeah. everything on the table. But I think another thing to make note of, uh, obviously Swarmlord is good no matter what. Venom Thropes are huge here because it can just add an extra save, add an extra level to your saves. Venom yeah. Thropes, Zone Thropes. Zone Thropes. Any, any of those support bugs are huge. Just support to, bugs. It's just something to give your big... Gaunts, an extra level of survivability. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, it's pretty. It's a pretty balanced. You can play whatever you want after you fill it out with hordes. Yeah. Nothing else to say there, really. Yeah. Jormungandr. This is a fun one. It has a lot of potential. Uh, we'll get into that. Hmm. So units gain light cover unless they advance and charge or have the fly keyword. Sure. So this is good. You, I mean, your backline units, as long as you're just making standard moves mm. they get cover for even just being out in the open nice it's good the warlord trait grants ignore cover to units within three inches there's a chance i mean so what you could do is you put a i don't know a neurothrope or a malanthrope you do it and they have give them that world trait and they sit next to exocrines mm. now your exocrines are ignoring cover which Ooh. that's the best way i could see you using this really yeah definitely the psychic power is a great one. Again, there is no range or anything to this. Mm -hmm. Units that arrive that turn can reroll hit rolls against a chosen enemy. So you pick you pick an enemy, one enemy, and then everything that arrives can reroll hit rolls against it. Okay. So that's shooting and close combat. Oh. So think of things like I mean, there's a lot you can do with reserves if you really play into it. And it's one enemy per turn. Basically. Yes, one enemy, one enemy per, per turn, turn you can pick. Okay. So. You can do um, Raveners. Mm. They can all have Death Spitters. Mm. A group of nine of them, that's 45 shots. That can all reroll hits. Yeah. And then they can charge in. You can use the Lictor with the Pheromone Trail to bring in units of Gaunts and Warriors. There's a lot you can do with that one. Yeah. The Stratagem, enemy from below, you can set up an infantry unit alongside Raveners, Molox, Trigons. Yeah. So they actually act as an extra tunneling system. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the Jormungandr, these are the cool. tunneling boys. I didn't say that earlier, but... Known for their tunneling systems. Yeah. The Relic, uh, it's it's straight trash. Minus one leadership to enemies within six inches. Definitely the least useful Relic between the... I think it's the re least useful Relic in the Codex. In the, okay. in the whole Codex. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. As for the playstyle of Jormungandr, they are slower, more durable, and they tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they play two different ways. You want your big bulky units in the back line. So you can use your hive guard, your exocrines, your warriors sitting in that back line, gaining that cover. Yeah. And then you have your deep striking assault force coming up the middle. Oh. That's where your combat is coming from. Okay. So I guess as opposed to speed across the table with Kraken, Kraken yep. or Behemoth getting your charges in easier, you're doing... The third method. Which is deep striking. Deep striking, tunneling. Or tunneling reserves, yeah. yeah. And this one has a few uh, different key units that we haven't really talked about too much, mm -hmm. but it is the tunnelers, of course, which are Raveners, Molochs, Trigons, which can all dig tunnels for any, Yeah, basically any unit. So that stratagem, right. you pay one command point per unit. I believe it's infantry unit, not monsters. Okay. But it's a way to get, I mean, you can get your pyrovores, you can get... Venom Thropes up the front line. You can get Zone Thropes up the front if you want. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's a. It's kind of like, a, at least in my brain, it's kind of like a third-party choice of how to move your Tyranids up the board. Yeah. The only, the only downside is that because in 9th edition, our board has gotten smaller, both mm. width and depth, mm -hmm. there is less room to deep strike. That's true. It might get a little tricky to pull it off. But you can essentially hide half your army in reserve, and the other half your army has that durability buff. And fluff-wise, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. They're underground, you know? It, They're going to burrow up and destroy everything. Having all the Trigons and Molochs yeah. popping up is really cool yeah, for the Tyranids. Cool, for sure. 
So yeah, like we said, the key units, uh, your pyrovores could actually be pretty good here. True. Uh, Gons, gene stealers, anything just to get up um, from that alpha striking sort of deep strike. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for durability, you want some warriors to sit back, hold keep objectives, synapse. Yep. keep synapse. Hive guard will benefit from this. Exocrines, Tyranofexes yeah. will benefit from being backline support units. It's an interest. Yomagander is an interesting one because it has like, it kind of benefits two opposite yeah, it's, parts of your army. It does. It really, it's just like uh, Kraken. It does give you, in a way, two benefits. Yeah. Hmm. I like it. Okay. Now for the potentially the most competitive one here, we have Kronos. Yeah. So this high fleet adaptation, well, I should say before, they're known for the devastating shooting. Very devastating. Very devastating. Yeah. High fleet adaptation, reroll hit rolls to one if you didn't move. Which for Hive Guard and Exocrines, which are the main beneficiaries of this, you're not. You don't you're want never to move, moving. Them. And yeah. tire effects, you don't Answer. want to move yeah. anyway. Yep. The Warlord trait, and so this is another one where they have two halves do it, which is why it's one of the better ones. Mm. So they also have like a anti psychic, an mm. extra shadow of the warp mm. level. So the Warlord trait, enemy psychers suffer D3 mortal wounds when they fail a psychic test within 18 inches. Brutal. It's good against certain armies. Very That's brutal. very good. Yeah. Their psychic power, again, very, very good. The range on this one is only, I believe, 12 inches, but Symbiostorm, sixes to hit count as two hits for shooting. Oof. Sticking that on a unit of five or six Hive Guard, an Exocrine, a Tyranofex. Especially since. Those, I mean, what, the Hive Guard get to shoot twice. They could shoot twice. The so that's the one a lot of people do. They shoot twice. It counts for both shooting fa shooting phases. Oh, it does? Mm -hmm. It's for the rest of their shooting phase. And because it, it's in the wow. shooting phase, yeah. That's, I would say that's almost an exploit. But it's, it's devastating. It's, it's a good one, yeah. Yeah, it's you good. use it while you can. Because I yes. almost guarantee single mind annihilation is gone in the next codex. Right. It's just... Really, That's good. It's just really strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stratagem, the deepest shadow. This one's fun. It can catch people off guard. Enemy psyker can only use a single die when casting a power. Hmm. So, okay. and they can't, there's no take backsies. So, someone could be going for a warp charge seven power. And you're yeah. like, uh, no. One command point, they can only roll you, one dice. Oh. You just can't get it. You auto fail. Auto fail. Huh. It, it could be good. That's cool. Okay. Their relic, it's not a great one. Um, it's basically a souped up gun. They can't make everything in Chrono. They can't make it. everything good. Uh, 36 inch range, assault D6. It is blast, uh, strength 7, AP minus 1. Two it's not bad though. It's not bad. No. No. But it, it, it's all right. I wouldn't put it, I mean, you could put it on Hive Tyrant. I would, I, eh. Just have them eh. charge in while everything else shoots. Exactly. Yeah. And the Chronos playstyle, as you can imagine, big guns, they sit in the back and they shoot. You have small little bugs that screen up, grab the objectives. Uh, key units, like we touched on, Hive Guard, Exocrines, Tyranofex are, I would say, the main ones. Yep. And we also have, you can have a Shooty Carnifex. What is the guns that they... So, they Shooty Carnifex is, I think, in some people's they eyes... They can be good. They can be very good. Very good. They, I would say they're underrated. Yeah. Um, because you can pay to make them Ballistic Seal 3+. plus. That is... And you can give them a lot of... So, you can give them the Heavy Venom Cannon, mm. which is the Strength 9, AP minus... Two flat three damage, mm -hmm. D3 shot, so it's a little swingy. What's the one I'm thinking of, though? The Hive Tyrants. Oh, the Death Spitters? Yeah. Yeah, so Death you Spitter. could give them two two, de two sets of Death Spitters, so yeah. they have 24 shots. That's... Which is good. At Ballistic Skill 3? Ballistic like, Skill 3, rerolling ones if you crumb, stand yeah, still. Exactly. Uh, but ideally, with these guys, you want to give them uh, one of those guns and one of the, the Heavy Venom oh, Cannons. Yeah. So they can do a little bit of close range um horde shooting down and then yeah. some big anti-tank guns sure and then warriors uh you think for you can have shooting on them you can too? have shooty warriors yeah. and like they can have venom cans things like that it's not the craziest shooting ever but uh, it can be pretty good if they're the if the warriors i would use are just like three-man squads you get yeah. one of them a venom cannon two of them death spitters and they're just to provide synapse hold an objective and put out an extra couple chip damage I shots mean, with that it's kind of i would say a relatively cheap unit to get some nice shooting i think if you give them a venom cannon two death spitters you're looking at like 70 points for three three of them it's not bad. 75 points it's really yeah not bad. It's not bad no uh then you'll want some support units again they do have that psychic element but you also want to protect your gun line so mm. neurothropes and zone tropes for your psychic powers malanthropes and venom tropes to even further protect your uh your gun line 
Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to need some units to grab objectives. So Gaunts. probably Gaunts, Rippers, and Lictors yeah. would be some other key units to add to this. Definitely. All right. So that was a summary. Just to go over the high fleets very quickly again, Leviathan, your most well-rounded. Kraken, your most mobile. Behemoth is very is one of your combat offensive ones. Gorgon is another combat offensive one, but less so. In a different, yeah, a different way. A little way. bit less, yeah. Jormungandr is your cover in deep strike sort of one. Combo, I would say. Combo. Hydra is swarms. Swarms, lots of swarms. Yep. And Kronos is your gun line. And now, the most fun part, in my opinion, is the ranking. Where would you like to start, bottom or top? Well, Kronos... Well, let's go to the bottom. Yeah, let's go ah. worst to best. So Hydra, we, you kind of took a hint probably. Hydra's, we think they, they're pretty bad. If your entire army is mostly relying on being a swarm, you're going to be lacking a lot of things that an army needs to win. Yeah, so you can do Hydra where you can play the swarm, bring 120 gaunts, just prevent your en enemy from even getting to objectives. Yep. It has won tournaments in 9th edition. It can. But there are better ways to play swarms. You could play them as, your, not Jormungandr, but you could play them as Jormungandr, get an sure. extra cover save. Sure. You could play them as uh, Leviathan and give them all 6 up feel no pain. Or, I mean, I'd say maybe the best would be Kraken. You can give them Kraken for some serious mobility. Just speed, yeah. There are some custom high fleets that could give them 6 up invuln save, so they always have a 6 up save. Stay tuned for that video. Yep, those guys yes. are coming. So, but let's go Hydra, Gorgon. Well, Hydra's the least competitive, Hydra's, but yeah. pretty fun. But it, it's a fun fluff wise. Fluffy, yeah. yeah. Then the next is Gorgon. Yeah. Again, just rerolling ones to wound is it, it only getting a benefit in one portion of the phase yeah. of the game is not great. If you want a close combat army, we would say probably go with Behemoth, but even a little more than that. Probably do Kraken. Go with Kraken if you are trying to win. Yeah. You know? Otherwise, have fun. Gorgon, yeah. is, Gorgon is a sweet paint scheme, and fluff-wise, yeah. I love the poison, but... It's cool, fluff-wise. It's, yeah. it's fun to have a bunch of toxin sacks. It's just not the most competitive. Yeah. Next, I would say Behemoth. Again, your only benefit is rerolling charges. Sure, I think rerolling charges in some cases is better than rerolling ones to wound. In some cases. But it's only one thing you benefit from. And there's, in most, even in tier net armies, which you might in your head think about as just a bunch of bugs that want to attack you, yep. they're pretty balanced, and not everything's going to want to be charging all the time. So you don't want that to be your only yeah, your only, your only thing niche. you're getting. Yeah. Then I say Leviathan. These last four, I have them on the tick. They're pretty spaced out, but I think these last four are a lot closer yep. than the other three. It's really two tiers apart from each other. So those were the lower, lower. tier. We'll kind of go into upper tier now. I think Leviathan is great. Having six up feel and pain if you want to play that tankier role. Yeah. Again, this is you're not going to be playing for combat, but putting them on warriors is something I really love. Yeah. Just increasing the durability. And they're balanced, so you can really include whatever you want with them. Yeah. Jormungandr, I think, is the third, just because that cover bonus can be applied to so many units. Yeah. And you can stack that with things like the adaptive physiologies to just further increase that durability. Sure. Plus the potential for having a deep strike. While deep strike reserves is not the best as it used to be, mm. there is still a lot of potential for bringing units into the front line and doing some serious alpha strike damage yeah. to your opponent. Second to last, or second to best, second I to best. would say is probably Kraken. Uh, the dual advantages, you have the 3d6 for your advance. Yep, pick the highest. Pick the highest, and then... Fall back and charge. Fall back and charge, so the, having two of probably the best. Yeah, they really helps you play objectives, which truly is the probably the Ninth best edition. way for Tyrants to play 9th edition, because they're not going to yeah. be killing a ton, but playing objectives is always great. Just being able to move is uh, second to none. Yeah. Uh, actually, second to Kronos. <laughs> and yeah, Kronos, we think, is the best if you are playing just one specific high fleet. Yeah. The the game still plays a very shooty game as much as we want combat. Yeah. You can play combat, but having shooting, putting having a group of Hive Guard or your Exocrines benefiting from the bonus of, bonuses of Kronos yeah. is just 
the, sh the firepower spikes up a, a lot. lot. I think it is worth saying too that although we do think Kronos is the best, at least as far as me playing against you, you being the Tyranid player, yep. he enjoys Kraken a little bit more because he likes close combat. I do. I Shooting's fine. I'm, yeah. If I want to play shooting, I'll play my Admech or my Space Marines or yeah. something, but... So Kraken yeah. gets our uh, the personal most fun from yep. Maelstrom Gaming Studios. <laughs> it is. So one more thing we're going to touch on is some more gameplay options. Right now, it is very viable, and actually some would argue, and I might argue too, mm. You, if you want to play for competitive, combine multiple high fleets. Yes. You have to be careful because you know certain psychic powers or certain buffs from units only affect those um, high fleet yep. units. But your most competitive is probably taking a high fleet, a shooting high fleet of Kronos, and then taking, say, a, a Kraken for your mobility and objectives. Yeah. And right now, as we're saying, with the 8th edition Codex playing a 9th, there are no penalties to doing that. For us, it makes absolutely no sense fluff-wise. <laughs> yeah. Why are two high fleets fighting side by side? They would be eating each other. So for a competitive standpoint, do it now if yeah. you think you want to play your most competitive way. Try it out. Like Try it out against a good opponent and see how it goes. It'll do well, yeah. but don't get used to it because when the 9th edition codex comes, hopefully later down the year, yeah. that's gone. I will bet a lot of money, maybe my entire, no, not my entire tier interaction. Half. Half. I bet my all my termagants on it <sighs> that... They're going to get rid of... Well, they're going to penalize you for yeah. taking multiple high fleets. There will be some kind of negative to it. But as of right now, there's not. Use it. Try so, it out. <clears throat> that is our overview of the high fleets. It was a bit of a lengthy one. Yeah. But it's important, especially for new players, to understand all of the different ways that you can play Tyranids. Tyranids have, in my opinion, probably the second deepest codex in the to space marines, to space marines. Yeah, yeah space marines you can't compete with 100 data sheets Nothing or can. whatever yeah but tyrants have so much mobility you can play all of these armies and fill out different detachments and play them in different ways and yeah. they're all different i mean sure your combat ones are going to be gorgon and behemoth are going to be similar but they're all pretty different yeah and i love that about tyranids yeah i would definitely suggest try as many as you can out right now before the new codex comes out and don't get stuck to one of them. Um, even if something's good, try another one. Try them, yeah. Try a couple different things because you never know what you're going to end up liking. There's a lot of different combinations. Hopefully this video has been helpful. We will, this is coming out on Friday, the following Monday, mm. we will cover the custom high fleets. Another way to mix up a little bit of your high fleet play style. Even more customization. Even more customization. Spoiler, they're probably not for the most part, as competitive as some of these, but I would argue combos of custom high fleets are better than some of them on this list. Sure. If you found this video helpful, whether you're new or old, please like and subscribe. We are gonna be doing more videos on the Tyranids and other armies in the future. Share this video, like it, it helps us out. We're a young channel, we wanna keep growing. That being said, have a great day and thanks for watching. Thanks guys. Bye.